Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying uh, an articulated streamer for you today. Um, it's just a, a double bugger or a monster bugger. Um, basically, a lot of the articulated streamers, um, like the woolly buggers still the sort of the blueprint for it. Um, and it's effective. Uh, you can use this as like a jumping off point, right? You don't have to take it as like this is the pattern. Um, I think the pa patterns for a lot of these streamers are to an extent kind of irre irrelevant, really. Um, you know, the exact dressing is no that crucial. So, starting off my back hook, and this is a Varivas uh, 2500V SE, it's a straight eyed streamer hook, I quite like them, they're um, 3x long, fairly heavy, not too heavy, and they've got a, a long taper point, quite a good hook all round, for, I mean either as singles or for articulated streamers, but as I said, you can use the hook that you that you like. So for the tail, I'm tying a slightly different coloured version. It was a black one in the vice. I'm using uh, this is Mottle Boo. It's a Spirit River product uh, in brown. It's great. It's like sort of tie dyed Marabou, and it's strung together. It looks a bit like a, a tail. Um, it's excellent stuff. So I'm just going to cut a clump of that. The thread I'm using is just uh, 6 of it. Danville's Flymaster. Just tie that in. And I'm not that worried about how tidy this is at the back. Um, because it's such a big fly, it's not as if I need to be worrying about uh, keeping this super neat. But the tail length, length of the hook, and then grab a wee bit of flash. This is a copper peacock uh, tinsel here. It's a Sibai product, but you can use whatever, like sort of flash a buoy stuff. See that I'm tying that. I'm leaving it long. Just fold it. Fold it over, tying it in, and I'm leaving myself a good quarter inch ahead of the where I want to finish my tie in, so that I can manipulate the material in the way back, sort of spread it, um, get it around the tail to an extent. I'll just come in and cut it sort of different lengths, but longer than the marabou. And that lets it have flash on top, on the sides, on the bottom. Which I think is quite important. Um, you know, probably when fish are hitting streamers, they're coming from behind and, and below a lot of the time. So I don't like to have my flash just on top. So next I'm going to tie in a rib, which I think is paramount because it just protects your fly, makes it last that much longer. Um, a lot of guys tie their streamers without ribs, but I just think it's it's such a, an easy step that you should include it. Body. Pheasant tail coloured ice dub, you can put it in a loop, you can dub it in a noodle, doesn't matter, up to yourself. Get that on the thread. And at this point you can sort of level out the the body to compensate for the bump of the tail. We 
wee bit more right so then I'm going to take my hackle, I'm using a slapping feather a grizzly, it's a natural grizzly slapping and I'll just take away any of the, the crap at the bottom tie it in fold that stem back for a bit of durability then take a full wrap at the front and palmer it back if you go reasonably quickly uh, you don't need to worry so much about trapping like the the, the fibres of the hackle show it that flash a bit to get it out the way then take this rib again go quick get it up the front there come across your thread at 90 degrees a few tight turns bend and break it save your scissors snap away the tip of that feather then stick some rubber legs in these are dead just two legs these are Blue, fake, blue flake pumpkin silly legs but again I don't think it's that important really just fold them across the thread there watch your hackle set them on this side and then pull it tight across Set them in the other, then you can come in and have a wee look. Now, when you trim your legs, you want them, they've got to not be too far back, like the back of the bend's about as far as they can be, really, um, that they won't foul. Right? Otherwise, they can wrap around about the hook and stuff. Now just to tidy that up, we'll just stick a wee little pinch of uh, ice yarn, ice stub, sorry, just there. If it's not behaving, the wee clip will just hold everything. Quick, quick finish. Tighten that up. Come in with some head cement. And don't be shy. Slather it in there. Don't worry about flooding the eye, you can just take the scrap of your, your body hackle, poke it up in there, that will clean out any excess, your eyes, then your eyes nice and clean. And that's your, that's your rear half. So for the front, I'm using The same model hook in this instance, but one size bigger. So the tail, the back half was tied in a four, and this is a two. This allows me to tie the same size of body and still have a bit of room for my, my head.
for the weight, I'm going to take um, a dumbbell eye. Base a thread, and this is a this is a medium lead dumbbell. So I take a couple of wraps over just to catch it, and I flip it onto the underside. So I want this to ride hook point down. Six six wraps in one direction. Six and another, and just start figure eight and through. Check it's even. And then repeat the process. The, the crucial thing is that these are locked in and will not move. And then you can take some wraps between the shank and the eyes to really help tighten that up. And then the other way, over the shank and under the eyes. And then again between under tension and you know, that tight, right? And then to help hold everything in place, we'll get some super glue and we'll be generous with the super glue, we'll saturate thread quite thoroughly just to make sure then you get your beading wire it's just beadle on 49 strand flexible wire cut myself about three or four inches Thread on my back fly. Line up the tips. Then I'll take some glass beads, but you can use whatever beads you like. Plastic beads will do. Um, you can use one one large plastic bead like a, at the bass shop. I'm using three small silver lined glass beads just adds an extra wee bit of flash again doesn't matter doesn't matter um, these flies are not something that are getting like, pulled over in minute detail by the fish So, I'll offer that in, and I'll spiral my thread back, right, so right there a bit tight, that's good, it's actually too tight, I need to adjust it. I'd like it to be just slightly shorter. Is that better? And I'll spiral my thread back under pressure. And I'll just just edge round the bend a wee bit. Then I'll come back up and open turns, open spirals. Again, always tight, right? I mean that's already quite firm. Right, 
but just to be sure that done. We'll fold the ends back. Lock everything in place. Then I'll come in with some more super glue. I mean, probably don't really need it, but it does no harm. Now just wind over them, um, and it'll stick any thread onto any exposed bits of the wire coating. Helps it off the, the glue as well. So to cover up the gap, just take another bunch of this mortal boo. Make sure my glue's dry, and I'm going to just offer it back. I want it to come about halfway into the body of the, the rear fly and I'll just spread it sort of around around the shank rather than tying on top and that just really sort of smooths out the smooths out the gap creates a sort of nice continuous profile but it won't have any impact on the freedom of the articulation. Some more flash. It's the same stuff. Again, coming back just about a similar distance. Fold it over and spread it around. Okay, we're just repeating everything, so time for the rib. Just clip my just moisten that slightly, stick the clip over it. Just makes life easier, keeps everything out of the way. And then Ice stub again. Again, don't be shy. Make sure you get plenty in there. Take another slap and hackle. I'm going to leave some of the marabou like fluff on the bottom this time. Just for the first turn. Just adds a bit of volume. But the same thing, a full turn at the front. And then just run it back. And then cross over with your rib, bring your rib through, try to avoid catching the fibres but don't, don't worry too much, don't spend a lot of time on it. If you just sort of quickly go up and through, you'll catch fewer. 
get that in front of the hackle, pull everything back, lock that down nicely. Take away the tip of the hackle. And I've got another couple of rubber legs. Same thing. Just fold them across your thread. Oops, broken. Fold it across your thread, catch it on one side, a loose wrap, another one, pull it tight, pull it across, and then same again, come in, not much further behind than the back of the hook. And at this stage it's up to you how, how you want to finish it, you could just add a bit more ice dubbing to smooth this off. Um, I'm going to use some nymph dubbing, which is a byproduct again. Um, it's a really coarse dubbing. I've got to put a little bit of a little bit of the ice dub through it. And I'm going to spin it in a dubbing loop. So to do that, I'm just tearing the card in the dubbing, which is just basically you pull it through itself and stack it back so that the fibers are going in the same direction. There's a wee bit of, wee bit of sparkle in that, I think you can, the camera's picking it up. I'll mix that in. Then I'll make my loop. Just take this clip. Don't want your, don't want your rubber legs catching in the dubbing loop, so the mini hair clip's very handy. Right your loop, wrap the thread around it a couple of times to close it and then I'll advance advance your thread to the front. Then just take your, your dub in, fill it in. Don't want it too heavy, you should be able to sort of see through the dubbing in the loop. And just take your dubbing spinner, Spin that up. You can hit it with some Velcro before you wind just to help bring out the, the fibres. And then squeeze a good turn or two behind the eyes. Figure out through them. And then if you can manage a turn in front, that's ideal. Bring your thread across the loop. Then 
tie back over it. Trim away your waist. Draw back any fibres that are going forward and whip finish. And there you have it, that is a, a double woolly bugger or a monster bugger or whatever you want to call it, it's an articulated streamer, which are increasingly in vogue. It's up to you what you do with the head, you could use senyos or deer hair or whatever. Just get a brush with the velcro, but that's it. So. There you've got the uh, an articulated bugger. Tie them different colours. And this is about six inches long. You could tie them a bit smaller and a bit bigger. It's up to yourself. So uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope that was useful. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel, share the videos, etc. Thanks very much for watching. Tight lines. Bye.